So hi everyone and a very good morning to all of you. Welcome back once again to another session of PIB 247. In today's class, we are going to talk about PIB news from 19th to 20th of December 2022. And I hope your preparations of RBI Grade B are going well. So, jitna bhi time aapke paas basta hai. Agar aap working hai, to please focus on your studies now because you never know RBI ka notification kab aayega. All right. So let's begin with the session without any delay and let's talk about the very first question which is about the social progress index. And believe me ki ye question, a question from so uh, social progress index is definitely going to come in your examination. Ye maan ke chalo ki ye question aapka leak ho gaya. Right. So let's talk about this question. You have to identify the correct statement about recently released social progress index for states and districts of India. Very, very important question. So let's talk about this index and then we will come back to the question. So as the name says, it is a social progress index, which means this index measures the social progress of the country at national and sub-national level, right? It measures the country's social progress at national and sub-national levels. Right. It has been prepared by Institute for Competitiveness and Social Progress Imperative. Right. Institute for Competitiveness and Social Progress Imperative. And it has been released by Economic Advisory Council to the Prime Minister of India. EAC 2 PM has released this index. Right. Now this index uh, is based on three broad parameters, which means the index has uh, assessed the social progress of the country based on three parameters and these are basic human needs, foundations of well-being and opportunity. So these are the three parameters, major parameters based on which the index has been prepared. But there are some sub parameters as well under these parameters. Like <coughs> under basic human needs, there are four sub parameters. If you don't see it, it will be visible in PDF. Don't worry. I will read it here. So under the basic human needs, there are four sub parameters. These are nutrition and basic medical care, water and sanitation, housing and personal safety, right? Then under the parameter of foundation of well-being, there are again four sub parameters, which are access to basic knowledge, access to information and communication. Then we have health and wellness. And number four, we have environmental quality. And then under the opportunity parameters, there are again four sub parameters which are personal rights, personal freedom and choice, then we have inclusiveness and finally we have access to advanced education, right? So these are the sub parameters under these three broad parameters of this index. Now you have to remember the sub parameters as well. That is also important. Now remember the total number of indicators, the three broad parameters we know and then uh, there are 12 sub parameters and then there are indicators. So the total number of indicators at national level is 89. Oh, sorry, at state level is 89. While at the district level, it is 49. 49 at the district level and 89 at the state level. And the scores, jo scores hai, uh, ranges from 0 to 100. 0 is the lowest score. 0 is the lowest, while 100 is the highest score. And of course, no state or no UT has got the 100 uh, score, 100 marks. Kisi ko nahi mile hai. And yes, based on these scores, the states and districts are ranked under six tiers of social progress. So there are six tiers of social progress. Okay, number one, tier one may all the states and UTs which have very high social progress. Then in tier two, we have high social progress, then upper middle, then lower middle, then low, and then finally very low social progress. And there are only three states in very low social progress, right? Now talking about the rankings. So the best performing states, which means the states, the top three states in the very high social progress, right? Jo very high social progress that is in the tier one. Usme bhi jo top three hai, these are Puducherry with a score of 65.99. This is the highest score followed by Lakshadweep and Goa, right? Similarly, we have top three best performing districts, right? And these three districts have very high social progress. And these are the top three. Number one, where we have Azor, which is of course in Mizoram. Number two, Solan in Himachal Pradesh. And number three, again, uh, Shimla, which is again in Himachal Pradesh. Right. Now, if I talk about the dimension based toppers, right, the toppers on the basis of dimension. So in the basic human needs parameter or dimension, the top four states or UTs are Goa, number one, followed by Puducherry, Lakshadweep and Chandigarh. Right. 
you have to remember all four because the name of all four states or duties are mentioned in PIB. Okay, and as you know, PIB say direct question bante hai ESI ke paper mein, so it is important. Then in foundations of well-being, we have again top four states or UTs. These are Mizoram, Himachal Pradesh, Ladakh, and Goa. And in the third dimension or parameter, that is opportunity, Tamil Nadu is the best performing state. All right. And now, yahan pe maine screenshot laga di hai. I have put the screenshots here of all the tiers, jisme jo bhi state aata hai. So in the tier one in very high social progress, these are the states. Top three we have already discussed. We have Puducherry, Lakshadweep and Goa. Ye sare aapko yaad rakhne ki zarurat nahi hai. You can just have a look at these and identify where your state lies. Thikha, aapka state ya aapka UT kahan pe hai, wo aap dekh sakte ho. In tier two mein, we have these six states and UTs. Tier three similarly, we have five states and UTs, right? Delhi is at the upper middle social progress with a score of 56.28. Right, if you know if you want to know about Delhi, and it is at the rank 19, right? <clears throat> then similarly, we have tier 4, tier 5, and tier 6. And as I have told you, there are only three states in tier 6, these are Assam, Bihar, and Jharkhand. And the worst performer in this index is Jharkhand, which is at rank 36, and score is 43.95. Okay. So that is all about this index. I hope this index is clear. And now let's come back to the question. It was released by Niti Aayog. Is that so? No, it was released by EAC to PA, which means Economic Advisory Council to Prime Minister. This statement is incorrect. It assesses states and districts across three critical dimensions of social progress, which are basic human needs, foundations of well-being and opportunity. Absolutely correct. Puducherry, Lakshadweep and Goa are only top three performing state placed in tier one with score above 65. No, in tier one, there are various other states as well. Not only these three. So this statement is incorrect. Assam, Bihar and Jharkhand were only states placed in tier six with all scores less than 50. This is correct. And as all Solan and Shimla are the top three performing districts. So this is also absolutely correct. And we have to identify the correct statement, which means two, four and five should be the correct answer. Option D. Option D is the correct answer. Moving ahead to question number two. Question number two. Yes, this is again an important question. India will be hosting the next special uh, negotiation round for pillars two to four of Indo-Pacific uh, Economic Framework for Prosperity in February 2023. You have to identify incorrect statement about the framework. So this framework was recently launched this year only in the year 2020 by United States. And the news is this. It is the news because Union Minister of Commerce and Industry, Mr. Piyush Goel, has attended the virtual ministerial meeting on economic benefits for IPEF, right, which is Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, right. Uh, that is why it is the news and also you should remember that India will be hosting the next special negotiation round for pillars 2 to 4 in the month of February next year 2023, right. Now let's talk about this framework. So. First of all, do remember it is not a free trade agreement, right? It is basically a cooperation among 14 countries. It is a cooperation among 14 countries of Indo-Pacific region, right? And it seeks to advance resilience, sustainability, inclusiveness, economic growth, fairness and competitiveness for all the 14 economies, right? It was launched this year only 2022 by United States and it was uh, formally launched by President Joe Biden. And as I told you, it is not a free trade agreement. These are the 14 countries. Yes, you have to remember the name of all the 14 partners because for example, UPSC may, I believe 2019 or 20 may, there was a question that which of the following is not a G20 member. So in that case, you would have to remember all the members of G20, right? So similarly, here the question pucha ja sakta hai that which of the following is not a member of uh, or is or are the members of IPEF, right? So you have to remember the name of all the 14 partners. Now these 14 partners collectively represent 40% of global GDP and 28% of global goods and services trade, right? And this framework is based on four major pillars, which are trade, supply chains, clean energy, decarbonization and infrastructure. And number four is tax and anti-corruption. However, do remember that India is not a part of this trade pillar because of some uh, reasons which India has not clearly mentioned. Yes, uh, under trade pillar, various 
यू नो सब पिलर्स हैव टू बी एमर्ज ठीक है जो और भी चीजें हैं उसके अंदर उसको एमर्ज होना बाकी है एंड दैट इज वाई इंडिया इज नॉट अ पार्ट ऑफ ट्रेड पिलर राइट सो इंडिया इज अ पार्ट ऑफ टू थ्री एंड फोर पिलर्स राइट so that is all about this ipef and now let's come back to the question you have to identify incorrect statement it is a free trade agreement among 14 countries to so, pehla statement ki pehli hi kuch shabd jo hai wo galat hai it is not a free trade agreement which means this should be the correct answer option a because you have to identify the incorrect statement do remember it okay moving ahead to question number 3 Which of the following has launched India's first environmental social governance impact leadership program to mainstream climate, social, and gender agendas into corporate policies? Now there is a need to mainstream the crime, climate, social, and gender agendas agendas into the corporate policies, and that is why Indian Institute of Corporate Affairs, Indian Institute of Corporate Affairs, which works under the Ministry of Corporate Affairs, has launched the ESG, which is Environmental Social. governance impact leadership program right the objective of this program remember <clears throat> is to mainstream the climate social and gender agendas into the corporate policies theek okay? hai to inculcate these agendas into the corporate policies and it is a first of its kind program in india which is specifically or specially designed for creating leadership in three areas of environment social and gender right uh, not gender it's governance g for governance so that is all isse zyada detail mein jaane ki zarurat nahi hai and the correct answer therefore is indian institute of corporate affairs which was under mca ministry of corporate affairs which is headed by nirmala sitaraman moving ahead to question number 4 which government scheme has won the platinum icon in the digital india awards 2022 under the data sharing and use for social economic development category very very important question again so remember it is the smart cities mission it is the smart cities mission of ministry of housing and urban affairs uh, which has got this prize platinum icon in the digital india awards of 2022 now under us under the smart cities mission there is an initiative which is data smart cities empowering cities through data right this initiative is under smart city mission okay please don't get confused under smart city mission there is an initiative data smart in, uh, cities empowering cities through data this initiative has got this platinum icon award under digital india awards 2022 now talking about this initiative what is this initiative so remember <clears throat> the objective as the name says data smart cities initiative which is it is something related to data only right so the objective is to harness the power of data for better governance in the cities जो डेटा है उसका इस्तेमाल करके हम कैसे गवर्नेंस को एनहांस कर सकते हैं दैट इज दिन ऑब्जेक्टिव मिनिस्ट्री वी ऑल नो कवरेज ऑल दंड्रेड स्मार्ट सिटीज राइट एंड इट सीक्स टू लिवरेज एंड यूटिलाइज द वैल्यूएबल डेटा विच इज बींग जनरेटेड इन सिटीज बाई अ नेटवर्क ऑफ इंटेलिजेंट इंटेलिजेंट डिवाइस एंड सिस्टम नाउ इट यूज अ थ्री प्रॉन्ग अप्रोच ऑफ पीपल प्रोसेस people process and platforms three pronged approach is there people process and platforms to imbibe a culture of data awareness and data usage in city functionings and remember the data under this initiative are being collected through these portals or through these exchange these are smart cities open data portal india urban observatory india urban data exchange assessment and monitoring platform for livable inclusive and future ready urban india and then we have geospatial management information system you don't have to remember all the sources of data that is not required it is just for the understanding ki aakhir data ye le kahan se rahe hain right from where they are getting this data so for this it is required but you don't have to remember it and remember it has institutionalized a data ecosystem in cities through 100 data office and more than 50 data policies theek okay? hai i hope this is clear and talking about digital india awards so of course the digital india awards are being given to encourage and honor innovative digital solution by government uh, organizations it was launched in the year 2009 the awards are being given by nic national informatics center which is which works under the ministry of electronics and it headed by ashwini vaishnav so that is all and now let's come back to the question 
So which government scheme has got this award? It is Smart Cities Mission. Option D is the correct answer. Very very important question. याद रखना. ठीक है जी. आगे चलते हैं क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव पे. Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs will be organizing Urban 20 Cycle Events at Ahmedabad, Gujarat to prepare the urban agenda under G20 Presidency of India. As we all know, India has the G20 Presidency for a period of one year. Which of the following are the priority areas for this Urban 20 event? Now, first of all, what is this Urban 20? Remember, there are various groups under G20 for a specific uh, organ for specific purpose, right? Similarly, there is a group Urban 20, and of course, as the name says, this group was formed for catering to the issues of urban areas, for solving, for discussing the issues of urban areas. So, जितने भी G20 nation हैं, उनके जो urban areas हैं. ठीक है उनके बारे में जो भी इश्यूज है अर्बन एरिया से रिलेटेड ऑल द इश्यूज आर बीइंग डिस्कस्ड अंडर दिस ग्रुप इन दिस ग्रुप मीटिंग एंड उसके लिए जो भी सॉल्यूशन होता है वो आइडेंटिफाई किया जाता है ऑलराइट सो दिस इज अर्बन 20 नाउ मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ हाउसिंग एंड अर्बन अफेयर्स दिस इज द न्यूज़ विल बी ऑर्गेनाइजिंग अर्बन 20 साइकिल इवेंट्स एट अहमदाबाद इन गुजरात एंड दिस विल इंक्लूड शेरपा मीटिंग ऑफ यू 20 ऑल द शेरपास ऑफ ऑल द जी20 नेशंस विल बी देयर इन फेब्रुअरी 2023 and U20 Mayor's Summit will be organized in July 2023. Alright. Now, the objective of these U20 urban, uh, urban 20 cycle events will be to prepare the urban agenda under the G20 Presidency of India. So, as I told you, the U20 has to prepare or you know to discuss the urban issues in the G20 nations. The, the issues related to urban areas in the G20 nations. Alright. Now, it will be attended by members of G20 nations, mayors, representatives of C40 and United Cities and local governments. Now, remember this C40, Climate 40 and United Cities and local governments. These are the non-government entities which are working for upliftment or betterment of the urban areas in G20 nations. Okay. These are the priority areas of urban 20 events. These are encouraging environmentally responsive behavior, ensuring water security, Accelerating climate finance, leveraging local potential and identity, reinventing urban governance and planning frameworks, and catalyzing digital urban futures. Alright. Now, Urban 20 के बारे में मैंने आपको बता दिया. It is a platform uh, for cities from G20 countries to facilitate discussions on various important issues on urban development, as I already told you. And these issues include climate change, social inclusion, sustainable mobility, affordable housing, sanitation etc and it is one of the 10 engagement groups under g20 as i told you that there are various groups under g20 and out of all those groups it is one of the group right and it is a city diplomacy initiative wherein cities of participating nations discuss city level efforts to address the global challenges okay so this i have already told you and now let's come back to the question so, which of the following are the priority areas? I think all of the above is the correct answer. Encouraging environmentally responsive behavior, ensuring water security, accelerating climate finance, reinventing urban governance and planning frameworks, and catalyzing digital urban futures. All of the above will be the correct answer, guys. Option E. Option E will be the correct answer. <clears throat> Moving ahead to question number six. Adel Innovation Mission Niti Ayog has opened application for ATL. Marathon 2020-2023 ATL stands for Atal Tinkering Labs, right? What is the theme for this edition of Marathon? So the theme is asked, very easy question. So it is in news because Atal Innovation Mission has opened the application for ATL Marathon. Ab application open kare hai, this is not important of course. But ATL Marathon 2022-23 is important. Hai, the theme will be India's G20 Presidency. And this marathon is basically... Uh, you know, to provide huge opportunity for students uh, to innovate, not just for the uh, nation's issues, but also for the global challenges, right? And the area of challenges, the problem statement have a one education, health, agriculture, environment and climate, sustainability, development, digital economy, tourism, and others. Others may, if any, if you think that there is another problem out uh, besides these. So, you can identify it and solve it. Right? So, that is all about this news. And uh, what is the theme? India's G20 Presidency Option B. 
Let's talk about question number seven then. Very, very important question again. Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare headed by Narendra Singh Tomar is promoting usage of pro technology in agriculture under submission on agriculture mechanization. So you have to identify the correct statement with respect to the uh, financial assistance provided for promotions, uh, promotion of drones in agriculture. Okay. So let's talk about what type of, what kind of financial assistance is being provided for promotion of drones. Number one, financial assistance at 100% of the cost of agricultural drone is provided up to a maximum of 10 lakh per drone for purchase of drones by eligible organizations or entities. Okay. So these organizations or institutes, whatever, uh, whichever be the organization, eligible organization or institutes, if that organization or institute wants to buy, wants to purchase a drone, then 100% of the cost of agricultural drone will be provided by the government of India, but up to a maximum of rupees 10 lakh. 10 lakh rupees tak. Now, which are these eligible organizations or institutes? These are the eligible institutions. You don't have to remember. Okay. Then farmer producer organizations. Okay. Farmer producer organizations are provided with a grant up to 75% of the cost of agriculture drone for its demonstration on the farmer's field. Right. If any farmer producer organization wants to demonstrate right on the farmer field, then 75% of the cost of agricultural drone is provided in the form of grants to the FPOs, right? Then there is a contingency expenditure of rupees 6000 per hectare. Now, which organization or kisko provide karaya jata hai? So, it is provided to the implementing agencies. Okay? Now, these are the implementing agencies that do not want to purchase the drones. That do not want to purchase the drones but will hire drones for demonstration from custom hiring centers or other centers. Okay. They are not buying the drones, right? They are hiring the drones. So for hiring the drones, contingency expenditure of rupees 6,000 per hectare is provided to the implementing agency. But there is another category, those implementing agency who purchase drones for drone demonstration. Okay. Then there is another category. This is for those implementing agencies who do not want to purchase the drones, but they are, they want to just demonstrate, right? But then there is another category of implementing agency who purchase drones, but they only want to demonstrate in the farmer's field. Then the contingency expenditure is limited to rupees 3000 per hectare. 3000 per hectare rupees tak unko contingency expenditure diya jayega. Then financial assistance at the rate of 40% of the cost of agricultural loan is provided up to a maximum of rupees 4 lakhs. Up to a maximum of rupees 4 lakhs to make available drone services to farmers on rental basis. Okay, I'm organization. Let's say I am a custom hiring center. I am running a custom hiring center and I provide drones to the farmers on a rental basis. Then the government of India will provide 40% of the cost of the drone or uh, up to maximum of rupees 4 lakh to me if I want to purchase a drone, right? Now it is provided to CHCs under Cooperative Society of Farmers, FPOs and Rural Entrepreneurs, all right? And agricultural graduates, right? If there is any agriculture graduate who has established a custom hiring centers, then that agricultural graduate will get financial assistance at 50% of the cost of agricultural drone up to a maximum of rupees 5 lakhs. All right. And then there is a provision for individual purchase of drone as well. So financial assistance at 50% of the cost of drone up to a maximum of 5 lakh is provided to the small and marginal scheduled caste scheduled tribe people, women and northeastern state farmer. If there is a case of small and marginal farmer, right? And as an individual, he or she wants to buy a drone. Then in that case, that farmer will get 50% of the cost of the drone up to a maximum of rupees 5 lakh. And same goes for SCST farmer or women and northeastern state farmer, right? And for other farmers, if it is an individual farmer, other outside of these categories, right? Outside of these categories, then that farmer will get financial assistance at 40% uh, of the cost of agricultural drone up to a maximum of rupees 4 lakh, okay? Jahan pe bhi 40% hoga, maximum amount hoga 4 lakh and wherever it is 50%, the maximum amount will be rupees 5 lakh. In case of 100%, 50% of 
द मैक्सिमम अमाउंट इज अप टू रुपीज टेन लैक ठीक है सो दैट इज ऑल एंड नाउ लेट्स कम बैक टू द क्वेश्चन ओके वी हैव टू आइडेंटिफाई दी करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट एफपीओ आर प्रोवाइडेड ग्रांट्स अप टू सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ द कॉस्ट ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर ड्रोन बिल्कुल सही बात है एग्रीकल्चर ग्रेजुएट्स एस्टैब्लिशिंग सी एच सीज आर एलिजिबल टू रिसीव फाइनेंशियल असिस्टेंस एट फोर्टी परसेंट ऑफ द कॉस्ट ऑफ लोन आई थिंक दिस इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट बट लेट मी जस्ट नो एग्रीकल्चर ग्रेजुएट्स विल गेट रुपीज फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ द कॉस्ट ऑफ लोन ठीक है सो दिस इज इन करेक्ट द कंटीजेंट एक्सपेंडिचर टू इंप्लीमेंटिंग एजेंसीज दैट परचेज ड्रोन फॉर ड्रोन डिमॉन्स्ट्रेशन इज लिमिटेड टू थ्री थाउजेंड पर हेक्टेयर दिस इज करेक्ट and for those who do not want to purchase the drone this contingency is expenditure is up to rupees 6000 per hectare so 1 and 3 will be the correct answer option c moving ahead to question number 8 thoda sa lamba hoga session kyunki as you know parliamentary session chal raha hai to bahut sari news hoti hain jo ki hamare kaam ki hoti hain so thoda sa patience banaye rakhe which portal is managed by central adoption resource authority kara to bring transparency in the adoption system and curtail delays at various level so there is a portal which is being managed by kara and this portal uh, brings transparency in the adoption system and it curtails any kind of delay in this process right so that portal is known as carings which stands for child adoption resource information and guidance system right child adoption resource information and guidance system is the full form you have to remember the full form as well the objective of this portal is to bring transparency in the adoption system and to uh, minimize any kind of delay which is there in the process right it was it is basically managed by kara central adoption resource uh, authority and it is an online platform for end to end digitization of entire adoption process okay and therefore the correct answer is what caring portal option d and now let's move ahead to the questions in short but before that if you want to have the pdf of this session you can join the telegram channel the link is provided in the description and if you want to ask anything related to examination you can follow me here theek hai so now let's proceed to the questions which need no explanation the gross value addition in food processing sector in gdp has increased from 1.79 lakh crores in 2016-17 to how much in 2020-21 तो जो हमारा फूड प्रोसेसिंग इंडस्ट्री का ग्रॉस वैल्यू एडिशन है हमारी जीडीपी में वो कितना बड़ा है ठीक है फ्रॉम 1.79 लाख करोड़ इन 2016-17 टू हाउ मच इन 2020-2021 सो इट हैज इंक्रीज टू 2.37 लाख करोड़ ऑप्शन बी इज द करेक्ट आंसर वेयर हैज नेशनल एक्लव्य मॉडल रेजिडेंशियल स्कूल स्पोर्ट्स मीट ट्वेंटी ऑर्गेनाइज बाय next which is national education society for tribal students an autonomous organization under ministry of tribal headed by arjun munda so where has this organized so it was organized in vijayawada option d is the correct answer question number 10 very important question again india and australia had signed the india australia economic cooperation and trade agreement in april 2022 this we have discussed in detail already बट एक ये चीज न्यूज में थी तो ठीक है आई हैव मेड अ क्वेश्चन ऑन दिस थोड़ा रिवीजन हो जाएगा विच विल कम इन टू फोर्स ऑन ट्वेंटी नाइन डिसंबर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू ये यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दिस डेट एज वेल ऑन विच डेट द इंडिया ऑस्ट्रेलिया फ्री ट्रेड एग्रीमेंट विल कम इन टू फोर्स सो इट विल कम इन टू फोर्स ऑन ट्वेंटी नाइन डिसंबर इंडियन एक्सपोर्ट विल बेनिफिट फ्रॉम प्रेफरेंशियल जीरो ड्यूटी मार्केट एक्सेस इन ऑस्ट्रेलिया फॉर हंड्रेड परसेंट ऑफ इट्स टैरिफ लाइन ऑन दी अदर हैंड इंडिया हैज प्रोवाइडेड प्रेफरेंशियल एक्सेस टू ऑस्ट्रेलिया ऑन ओवर How much percent of its tariff line? So it is seventy percent. Option C is the correct answer. Question number twelve. Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment, headed by Dr. Virendra Kumar, implements a national action plan for skill development of persons with disabilities. The objective of this scheme is to provide skill training to PWDs for enabling them to become self-reliant and productive members of the society. and to integrate them with the mainstream of the society the question is very basic when was this national action plan launched theek hai ji it was launched in the year 2015 option a is the correct answer 13 pe aa jate hain ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship headed by dharmendra pradhan has identified skill benchmarking as a high priority area in its foreign engagements for this nsdc international national skill development corporation international 
under the aegis of msde has done a global assessment of demand for the skilled workforce in how many destination countries so in how many destination countries this assessment was done so it was done in 16 countries option b is the correct answer and that is the last question for today what was the share of msme uh, gva in all india gdp for the year 2020 2021 According to MOSPI, Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation, headed by Rao Indrajit Singh. So, what was the share of MSME GVA? It was 26.83%. Option C is the correct answer. Alright, so that's it for today's session. I hope all the questions and their explanations are clear. If you have any doubts, you can ask me in the comment section. And I will see you in the next session on Monday. Goodbye, take care and God bless.